America and the United States of America is very proud and really, I mean, hey, 9-11 came and for two weeks everybody repented and then everybody went back to, you know, and then there was a big stock market crash in 2008 and, you know, people lost a lot of their wealth and then eh, people go back. And then, you know, the, the, the whole pan, pandemic hits and, you know, there's this and that and the panic and then people go back to the way they were. They don't have any desire to repent. And God's going, yeah, come out from it. That's carnal. That is a predatory society. And it's got a king over it. And it's satanic. And then we have the, the, the Russian thing. See, this happens over a long period of time. Hundreds of years. We got the Russian thing. You know? And, but you see... He's got three ribs in his mouth and he devours much flesh. Well, he's telling you about a certain period of time there. Okay? And that's their, that's their what, what defines them, Russia. What defines them? The bear. And, and if you look the word up, uh, that, that word bear, it means sluggish. Well, look at their economy. Their economy is 1.1%. 1. 1 $1.4 trillion gross national product. The state of New York has a $1.7 trillion gross national product. One state in America, 12 states of America have more GNP than Russia. That's sluggish. So think about it. So what's the big rub? I mean, wow. Why should we fear them? Because there are forces behind them pushing that big military machine. And it's, it's sword rattling. It's propaganda. It's, uh, it's the way the elites work. They play one side against the other. All right? They have a king over them. And then we have this, this, um, this leopard and it has four heads, and it has four wings, and it's got spots, so it's camouflaging itself. They have a king over them. See, it's kings. This is how Satan operates in the world. This is how it works. And God's calling us out of it. He's, he's show, he's, he wants to show us how we overcome that. This fourth one, the third one, the leopard, I, I think, is China. See, you got the first one, the Anglo-Saxon nations, America leading that. And the second one, you've got the Russian bear. And you have this one, China. And see, this whole Chinese model, it's the model. It's the model for the New World Order. It's communism. It's the, the elite rule everything, and everybody else is a serf. Basically, that's how it works. And you're looking at China retooling. Those factories over there are being shut down. The automobile manufacturers all over the world, the factories are shut down. All over the world. And you're going... Well, when that happened to General Motors back when, we had to bail them out because it was such a huge part of the economy. Why aren't we bailing them out this time? Well, they are getting bailed out. They're, they got a whole lot of the money uh, when they had the, the handouts. But it's a whole retooling of this whole world system. And the United States of America... I'm going to tell you, you ain't going to like it. The wings are being plucked. And the United States of America could, the population could be reduced very greatly in the next few months or years to come. I'm just saying, we need to be very humble through this thing and, and aware of what's happening. And then you have the next one that comes, and it's the fourth beast, which is the beast system. And out of that, the Antichrist comes. See, the, the actual, the one from China, it really doesn't work. 
Look at that. It, 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 come, it comes to pass also. The, the, the one that supersedes it, the beast system, he's just going to use it. Yeah, because he says, who can make war against him? Ah, let's see. Well, so what do we do? You know, um, what we do is we continue to follow the Lamb. Go where the revelation of God is. You have to be fresh wineskins. You have to. If, if you get stuck in an old wineskin and you desire just the old wine because you think it's better, you're going to get left behind in this thing. You may die. And you don't want to die. You came this far. Let God finish what he wants to do with you. Um, in Daniel 7, in verse 9, this is after the Antichrist comes to power. He says, I kept looking until thrones were placed and the Ancient of Days took his seat, whose garment was white as snow and his hair and his head like pure wool, his throne like fiery flame. Its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand rose up and stood before him. The judge was seated and the books were opened. And I looked because of the sound of the words, the, the great words which the horn was speaking, you know, the Antichrist, and I watched until the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire, right? He gets thrown into the lake of fire. That's Revelation chapter 19 at the end of it. And the rest of the beast, their power of dominion was taken away. See, it's all about dominion. And see, Jesus is coming and he's going to take it all away from them. Yet their lives were long for a season at a time. That's about a year and three months. I saw in the night visions, and behold, in the clouds of heaven came one like the Son of Man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and kingdom, and all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom as one in which shall not be destroyed. Isaiah 9. This is our destiny. This is what God's called us to. This is our reality. The church, by and large, is teaching you, well, you know, you come to Jesus and you get saved, and so, you know, you're going to live with him in heaven, and... And they give you little cliches like, well, you know, I don't belong to this world. I'm just passing through. Well, I agree. Uh, we are not of this world, but we ain't just passing through. This is our inheritance. Jesus is coming to give us our inheritance. And he is going to take dominion. And we will rule under his dominion. But, Isaiah 9, we'll finish with this. In the midst of judgment, there is the promise and the certainty of God's deliverance. And there shall be no gloom for her who was in anguish. You know, labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. In the former time, the Lord brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make it glorious by way of the sea. Beyond the Jordan, the Galilee of the nations, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of intense darkness and the shadow of death upon them has the light shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nations and increased their joy. They rejoice before you like the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of Israel's burden and the staff or rod for goading their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, 
you have broken as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's war, brute, war boot and all his armor in the battle tumult, every garment rolled in blood shall burn, be burned as fuel for the fire. That's recorded in Ezekiel chapter 39 after the battle of Armageddon during the wrath of God. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It's going to happen. Question is, are we going to be a part of it? That's our question. It's going to happen. He is going to come and set up his kingdom. Every kingdom that ever lived, that's what they want, a kingdom without end. But they don't do it with the spirit. They do it in the carnal mind, and it always comes to naught. Empire after empire after empire in world history has, has been uh, burned on the trash heap. And they're going to keep being burned on the trash heap until Jesus takes dominion. And God has given us an everlasting kingdom. And it's here in the earth. And so he's calling us to understand these things. And Father, help us to understand it. Give us wisdom on how to understand these things. Show us how we can be your humble servants and, and that we can, we can uh, subject ourselves to you, Father, that we can be those people that you've called us to be in these last days and in the time uh, that, that you have set up for Jesus' kingdom to come. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, in earth as it is in heaven, but his kingdom don't have those nasty kings over them. It's got King Jesus over it. So, Father, help us to understand these things in Jesus' name.